In this video, I'm going to show you how to calculate related rates with squares. So here we suppose that the sides of a square are growing longer at a rate of 2 centimeters per second. We want to figure out how fast is the area changing when the sides are each 5 centimeters long. Well, why don't we draw this up? We've got our picture of a square right here, and we can label the sides with a variable, say, x. So all the sides of the square have length x. Okay, so what else do we know? We also know that the sides are growing longer at a rate of 2 centimeters per second. So that means the rate of change of x with respect to time is equal to 2. Okay, so that's all the information we're given in the problem. What do we want to find? Well, we want to find how fast is the area changing when the sides are each 5 centimeters long. So that is, we want to find dA dt, the rate of change of the area with respect to time, when the sides are each 5 centimeters long, but don't worry about that part for just yet, let's just focus on finding some expression for dA dt. Now the way we're going to do this is we're going to pull apart this derivative. dA dt we can express as dA over something times something over dt. The reason we can do that is just the chain rule. The chain rule says we can treat derivatives kind of like fractions. If we fill in the same thing for the top hair and the bottom hair, it's like we can cancel them out to get dA dt. That's a valid move. And then why do we even want to do this in the first place? Well, we want to do this so that we can decompose dA dt into quantities that we can actually calculate. For example, we already have dx dt, so it might be a good idea to fill in these blanks with dx. Let's go ahead and do that. That way the second term in our product, dx dt, we already know what that is, that's just 2. And now it just remains to see if we can figure out what dA dx is. First of all, can we construct an equation relating a and x? If so, we can just differentiate it and get dA dx. a is the area of the square, x is the sides of the square, x is the length of a side of the square, and hey, there's an easy equation for that. The area of a square is just equal to the side length squared. So if we differentiate this equation, dA over dx, the derivative of a with respect to x, that's equal to the derivative of x squared, which using the power rule, we know is just 2x. Great, so now we can just substitute straight into our product. dx dt, that's just 2, so we can put that in for dx dt here, and then dA dx, that's just 2x, and we can put that in for dA dx here. So writing this again, we have that dA over dt is equal to 2x times 2. So really just dA dt is equal to 4x. Okay, so now we turn back to the statement of the thing that we want to find. How fast is the area changing? Well, dA dt equals 4x. But what about when the sides are each 5 centimeters long? Well, that just means x equals 5. So dA dt, when x is equal to 5, well, just sub in 5 for x here, 4 times 5, which is equal to 20. And put some units on that. It's units of area over units of time. Area is just length squared and length of centimeters. So this is centimeters squared per unit of time, which is seconds. So 20 centimeters squared per second is how fast the area is changing when the sides are each 5 centimeters long. Alright, next question. Suppose that the area of a square is decreasing at a rate of 10 centimeters squared per second. How fast is the length of the diagonal of the square decreasing when the sides of the square have length 20 centimeters? Alright, so again we've got our picture of a square, and why don't we label its sides with a variable x. Now we're told that the area of the square is decreasing at a rate of 10 centimeters squared per second. So that means the rate of change of area, dA, with respect to time, so over dt, that is equal to negative 10. Negative because the area is decreasing, its rate of change is negative. The area keeps getting smaller and smaller with time. Alright, so what is it we want to find? Well we want to find how fast is the length of the diagonal of the square decreasing when the sides of the square have length 20 centimeters. Alright, so that's kind of a mouthful, but just focus on this part about the diagonal of the square decreasing. How fast is the length of the diagonal of the square decreasing? Let's just focus on that part to begin with. 
first of all, let's include the diagonal in our diagram here. So we'll just draw right across from corner to corner of the sphere, a segment, that's the diagonal. And let's label that with its own variable, say y. So y is the diagonal, and we want to find the rate of change of y with respect to time. Like we usually do, we're just going to pull this derivative apart. We'll decompose it into quantities that we can actually compute. So dy over something, then times that same something over dt. And we know what dA dt is, that's just negative 10, so that's a strong indicator that our something should be dA. Okay, so now the hard part is just figuring out what is dy dA. Can we get a relationship between the area and the diagonal length, and then can we differentiate that? Well, okay, let's just start by trying to create some equation that has a, the area, in it. We know that for a square, the area is equal to the side length squared. Okay, so now let's think, how can we introduce a y into that equation? Well, y is actually related to x here. If you take a look, this is a right triangle, and since it's isosceles, that means both of these angles are 45 degrees, so this is a 45, 45, 90 right triangle, and we know that for a 45, 45, 90 triangle, the hypotenuse, in this case y, is equal to the square root of 2 times the side length, x. So now we can get x in terms of y, just divide both sides by square root of 2 in this equation, and we get that y over root 2 is equal to x. So we can just take that and put it right on in our area equation. So area is equal to x squared, but x is really just y over square root 2. So that's squared. So squaring this, we get area is equal to y squared over the square root of 2 squared, which is just 2. And now let's differentiate. We'll differentiate with respect to y just because it's easier the way our equation is set up. And then we'll just take the reciprocal of the derivative to get dy dA. So differentiating with respect to y, we get that dA over dy is equal to, using the power rule, this y squared becomes a 2y, but that's over 2, so just y. Now taking the reciprocal, just flipping both sides, we have that dy over dA is equal to 1 over y. So that's what we can put in for dy dA in our equation here. And then dA dt, of course, we had that at the beginning, that's just negative 10, that goes in there. So putting this together, we have that dy dt is equal to dy dA, which is 1 over y, times dA dt, which is just negative 10. So really, dy dt is just equal to negative 10 over y. Okay, but we want to find dy dt when the sides of the square have length 20 centimeters. So we want to find that when x equals 20. So what does that equal? Well, our formula doesn't have x in it, it has y in it. But there's a simple fix for that. We already know that y equals square root of 2 times x, so we can just take that and plug it in there. So we get that dy dt is equal to negative 10 over square root of 2 times x. And finally, now we are at a stage where we can sub in 20 for x. So dy dt, when x equals 20, that's equal to negative 10 all over square root of 2 times 20. And let's just clean up this answer a little bit. So we know that negative 10 over 20 is just a half. So this is negative 1 over square root of 2 times 2, or just 2 root 2. And then we can rationalize this expression. So just multiply by root 2 over root 2, multiply by root 2 on top and bottom. I'll get rid of the root in the denominator. We just get negative root 2 over 2 times root 2 times root 2, which is just 2 times 2, which is 4. And what's the units on that? Well, y is a length, t is a time, so units of length, which is centimeters squared, over time, seconds. And our negative result for dy dt makes sense because the diagonal is in fact decreasing. The whole square is decreasing, and so is the diagonal.
But one thing to notice here is that the question asks how fast is the diagonal decreasing? So the question is already presuming that this diagonal is decreasing. Whereas our answer here is actually the answer to how fast is the diagonal increasing? The diagonal is increasing at a negative rate. To be very explicit, let's just write that in. The diagonal is increasing at a negative rate. So increasing at a negative rate. So how fast is the diagonal decreasing? Well, the diagonal is decreasing at a positive rate. If you are decreasing at a positive rate, that means your rate of change is negative. So that means our overall result should be a positive number because it's a rate of decrease. So our overall result is square root of two over four centimeters squared per second, the positive answer. So now we know how to calculate related rates with squares. And in the future, we'll continue to get plenty of practice with related rates, such as in the context of cubes, the Pythagorean theorem, similar triangles, trigonometry, and so on.